Hello students, we have already started our NCRT course and I'm your faculty for the science and technology subject. I'm Yogesh Kottawar and I'll be dealing with both aspects, the science aspect as well as technology aspect. I know many of the students are not even aware of the difference between science and technology. See, when you look at everything around you, you're looking at a human being, you're looking at an animal, you're looking at a plant, anything. And when you observe them, when you do experiments with them and you understand them, then we are dealing with the subject science. So what you do? Let's say I've got fever. So you will think about it. Why did I get fever? After a few days, I have recovered. So what exactly was happening inside my body that you observed? You made experiments with different animals. After that, you came to know. You used your brain to study that, to come up with theories. So whenever you are applying your mind, doing experiments, using reasoning, then you are understanding the entire world or you are observing this physical world. And this is all we are going to deal with when we are studying science subject. But after that, when you have studied all of this, when you use this all knowledge and apply it to solve any of your problem, in that case, we are dealing with the technology aspect. Let's say I got a particular disease. Let's say COVID-19. I'm affected by COVID-19. So there is a virus which has gone inside my body and now it is killing me. So I want something that can solve my problem. So here I'll use all the knowledge I have from science and I'll develop something that can solve my problem. So what I'll do? I will develop a vaccine. Now development of this vaccine is the technology aspect. It's not science. We used all the knowledge of science, applied it in the real life condition and solved our problem. So whenever you are looking at anything like artificial intelligence, internet of things, all these are called technologies because we are using the knowledge of science and developing these technologies. Okay. And as far as your syllabus is concerned, it will include science as well as technology. And you cannot neglect just one aspect and go for the other one. Okay. Now how important is this subject? So here I have a data for last 10 years of your UPSC prelims papers. So from 2015 to 2024 and you can see how many questions have been asked in the examination. So in the year 2015 you see 7 questions then 10, 8, 13, 14, 13, 12, 14, 8, 7. So in the last 10 years, they have asked somewhere around 106 questions from science and technology part. So you can understand the subject is quite important. It is one of the important subjects and seven, even if you're getting seven questions, then your score can improve substantially, right? Now, if we look at the syllabus, so this is the syllabus of prelims. And in this syllabus, you will only see one term given over here, that is general science. So they have simply mentioned general science, nothing additional. So from general science, we are not getting any great idea about the detailed part of the syllabus. And if you look at the main syllabus, so as part of your GS paper 3, which includes economy, environment, it also includes science and technology part. Now, this includes developments and their applications and effects in everyday life. So, whatever is your science and technology part, if not, not anything new is getting developed, if anything new that is having some effect in your day-to-day -day life, then that can be asked. Okay. Second thing, achievements of Indians in the science and technology. So, you can see. If there is any Indian person or any Indian organization who is doing something, who is making some contribution to the science and technology part. So let's say someone from India got Nobel Prize in Physics or Chemistry. Or let's say ISRO has made something very new, some kind of a satellite. All that will be part of this. Okay. Then there is indigenization of technology and developing new technology. Indigenization means you are developing something in India. When you are doing, when you are making a new technology, when you are bringing up something that is very new and that advancement is taking place in our own country, 
then that is indigenization. Technology is indigenized. Okay. Then awareness in the fields of space, IT, computers, robotics, nanotechnology, biotechnology and issues relating to intellectual property rights. Now this is the advanced segment. When you study entire science part, when you reach to the technology part, then you study the advanced concepts. So when you reach out to the space part, robotics, nanotechnology, that will be an advanced concept. Unless you study biology, you can't understand biotechnology in the right way. So overall, the science segment and technology segment will remain interlinked and connected. Okay. Now look at this particular graph. Here you can see all those 106 questions which are asked in the last 10 years. If we divide them, if we look at only the basic science questions. Now when I say basic science, your NCRT portion is anyway covering the basic science part. So your physics, chemistry, biology, all that part. 27 questions are coming from basic science. And when we move on to the science and technology part. So here the advanced science part and the technology aspect. It is having questions somewhere around 79. Okay. So you see almost 25% portion is from the basic science and remaining 75% is from the science and technology part. Now in this NCRT course, what we will be doing? First, our focus will be on this basic science because that is covered in the NCRTs. So we'll build our base and some aspects of this science and technology will also be included in this. So when you study entire NCRT from class 6 to class 12, now not every NCRT, every chapter is important for you. But whatever is relevant, whatever is important for you, I have curated that content. So here you will be dealing with all the major aspects, but not everything will be covered because the technology aspect it will not be part of NCRT. So you will be reading it from your newspapers or advanced textbooks. So in news, let's say you're reading a news about a new satellite launched by ISRO. So that will be part of your newspaper. But the knowledge you will get from your basic science that will be applied over there. So sometimes you will be solving any question directly with the knowledge you are getting from your NCRT part. And sometimes you will apply that knowledge and do some kind of a knowledge or intelligent guessing using that knowledge or you will apply that knowledge. Okay, I'll show you some questions too, which were asked in the previous year papers. So in the year 2011, you see this question from Science and Tech part. A married couple adopted a male child. So there is a couple, they adopted one child. Okay, one child is adopted. A few years later, twin boys were born to them. So after some year, this child is already there. Two more child children are born. Twin children. Okay. Now the blood group of the couple is AB positive and O negative. They have given blood group of the couple. Okay. AB positive and O positive. O negative. Okay. The blood group of the three sons is A positive, B positive and O positive. So they have given blood groups of the children too. Now they are asking the blood group of the adopted son is. Now, you might find this question very difficult right now. But believe me, once you study the blood group aspect, which will be part of our general science, then this question will be a cakewalk for you. It will be very easy for you. Okay? So, I am just giving you a brief idea of what kind of questions are asked in the examination. Another question from core biology. So, when you, we are dealing with the biology aspect, a very simple question directly from the NCRT. Which of the following statements are correct regarding general difference between plant and animal cells? Plant cells have cellulose cell walls while animal cells do not. Plant cells do not have plasma membrane unlike animal cells which do. And mature plant cell has one large vacuole while an animal cell has many small vacuoles. Again, you might find it difficult right now. But I am saying we will be dealing with biology aspect in which we will deal with cell biology or cellular biology. That will be one of your chapters. And this 
question can be easily dealt with if you have that basic knowledge of cell. Okay, so it's an easy question asked in the year 2020 prelims. So if you have got the basic idea of what kind of questions are asked and you can understand the importance of this subject, now you are ready to start. So we'll start with the first chapter that will be matter. Okay, so let's start. 